fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions. Present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Sheriff Sam is a boy of ten. He busts right in the robber's den and gets his man because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 That's Cheerios, the cereal shaped like little letter O's. And those O's stand for oats, the good grain Cheerios is made from. Every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, those good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. You can see that Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So make sure you have a Cheerios breakfast every day. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'm Silver. Hooray! Pete and Benny Sawtell were two brothers who had staged many daring bank robberies throughout the Southwest and successfully evaded the law. But no one knew it was their mother, the aging Maggie Sawtell, who planned their crimes from her small run-down farm a few miles from the town of Sandstone. Then one day, Maggie faced her two sons with concern in her weather-beaten face. Boys, we're going to pull up stakes and clear out of here. I saw an Indian named Tonto today when I was in Sandstone buying feed for the stock. Tonto is the Indian who rides with the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? We're clearing out before he finds but us. But we're almost broke, Ma. We'll need money if we make a big jump. Yeah, what about the farm? We'll have to get rid of the house and the stock. We can't just up and leave everything. It'd look downright suspicious if we did. I took care of all that today, Pete, after I saw the Indian. Well, what do you mean you took care of it? A week ago, a young fella stopped here and asked if I wanted to sell this place. He said he was going to get married soon, wanted a small farm. What'd you tell him, Ma? I said I'd think it over. After I saw the Indian in town today, I met the same young fella on the street. I told him to bring me the cash tomorrow, and I'd turn over the deed to him. He'll be here in the morning. Pete and I better be out of sight when he gets here. Everyone thinks you're a widow living here alone. The two of you will be out of sight, all right. I have a job for you to take care of. What kind of a job? The Stockman's Bank in Sandstone. You're going to stage a hold-up when it opens tomorrow morning. <laughs> It was shortly before noon the following day when Tonto hurried into camp where the Lone Ranger waited. Oh, Tonto, oh, fella. Easy, Easy, fella. Oh, what's happened, Tonto? Uh, two men hold up bank in sandstone. Sheriff Taylor capture one man, other one get away. Did you see the holdup? Me see two men come out of bank. Them wear cloth over faces. Then big gunfights start. Sheriff capture one fella, other one on paint horse get away. Uh, with the money taken in the holdup? Uh, that right. Did you trail the man who escaped? Uh, but me lose trail. Then me ride here. Bandit ride south out of town. Here, Silver. He may be trying to throw a posse off the trail. There's not much cover south of town. I think he'll turn west into the hills where he'll be hard to find. 
We ride into the hills and look for his trail. All right, let's go. Easy for the big fella. Easy, easy fella. Montilde! The Lone Ranger had been right. Pete Sawtell, the brother who had escaped after the holdup, turned into the hills after riding southward out of sandstone. But soon after reaching the rugged terrain, his paint horse went lame. Oh, oh there. Eddie. As he dismounted to examine his horse, he heard hoofbeats approaching. Thinking it was a lawman, Pete drew his gun and adjusted the bandana over his face. When the approaching rider drew near, he stepped from behind his mount. Stop where you are, mister, and get your hands up. Oh, oh there. Oh. Hey. What's the idea? Get off that horse, Prano. I never argue with a gun. You're smart, mister. Now just keep your hands up while I put my saddlebag on your cayuse. I'm swapping horses with you. You climb aboard the paint. Looks like I'm getting the best of the deal, mister. That Spanish saddle is worth a lot. I have no time to change. Now get mounted. Suits me. Easy. Head back toward town. Back to town? That's right. But listen, I'm on my way to see about buying a farm. I was due there an hour ago. That's your hard luck. Head for town like I told you. And uh, don't get any fancy ideas about following me. That horse is lame. Now move. All right. Get up now. Oh, you... Get up now. Stop here. Oh, 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 oh. Look down the trail, Toto. See that man riding a paint horse? Ah, um, me see him. And that same paint horse, bandit ride. All right, let's get to cover before he sees us. We'll stop him as he rides by. Come on, Silver. Come, come, come on. Easy, boy. Easy, stop. Easy, stop. Easy, go. Not ride past like bandit. His horse is lame. You grab his reins while I cover him. Ah, uh, me do it. Get your hands up. Hey, what a... Uh, he got rings. Now, what in the is going on around here today? What do you mean by that? This makes twice I've been held up in the last 30 minutes. And if you want to swap horses, it's a deal. No argument at all. This isn't a holdup, and I'm not swapping horses. But the sheriff will be interested in the horse you're riding. The sheriff? <laughs> I suppose you and the sheriff are close pals. Well, he knows of me. I'll bet he does. He makes it his business to know about master Al Hoots like you. And the sidewinder who just swapped horses with me at the point of a gun. Right now, Sheriff Taylor is more interested in the man who escaped on that paint horse after robbing the bank in the sandstone. What's that? You heard me. Take his gun and search him, Toto. Uh-huh. Yeah, me got gun. All right, I'll take it. Uh-huh. And here money you may find in coat pocket. I thought you said this wasn't a robbery. It isn't. This money will be turned over to the sheriff. And so will you. Hey, you don't think I stuck up the bank, do you? Can you prove you didn't? I just told you a fellow made me swap horses at the point of a gun. If this horse was used in the getaway, you'd better head back trail and catch up with the bandit who's riding my bay gelding. Who are you? My name's Boone, Jim Boone. And not that it's any of your business, but I'm engaged to marry Sheriff Taylor's daughter, Polly. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Thanks. What you do, Kimasabi? I'll ride his back trail and see if I can find the tracks of another rider. You take this man into Sheriff Taylor. Here's his gun and money. Uh, me take him. Wait for me in camp. Uh, me do it. He's has gone. Come on, Silver. Get him up. Come. Get up. After swapping horses with Jim Boone, Pete Sawtell hurried to his mother's rundown farm. The woman listened attentively to the account yeah. of events. After I got out of town, I saw an engine on my trail. Mm -hmm. But I managed to shake him when I crossed the creek. Then when I got in the hills, my horse went lame, and I swapped horses with a fella. Pete, did you get a good look at that engine? No, Ma, I didn't. Why? If he's the redskin named Tonda, that means we got to clear out of here and quick. Well, what about Benny? You get Benny out of jail or don't come back. I'll saddle a fresh horse and get going. In the town of Sandstone, a number of men were gathered about the jail when Toto and Jim Boone rode up the main street. The paint horse which Jim Boone rode was immediately recognized as the one on which the bank robber had escaped. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, where's Sheriff? Me got prisoner. Jim Boone, you ought to be hung. 
Drag him off that horse. Come on. Hey, let go of me. Get away. Let go. Now you get Sheriff. You not lynch him. Molly, stop these fools. Dad, Dad, come quick. Hey, it's Sheriff's daughter. Get her out of the way. Stop. Let him alone. Stop it, I say. Hey, what's going on here? Here comes Sheriff. Hurry, Dad. They're going to lynch Jim. All right, get out of the way. Let me prove it. Sheriff. Sheriff, I didn't rob the bank. He's lying, Sheriff. He was in cahoots with the critter you've got locked up in jail. And this paint horse proves it. The Indian trailed him out of town. Stand back, Mim. Stand back. Oh, Jim, what's the meaning of this? If they'll give me a chance, Polly, I can explain everything. I'll give you a chance to explain, Jim. Start talking. But you had better make it convincing. Jim Boone told Sheriff Taylor and the angry townsman how he had been forced to trade horses and how soon afterwards he had been stopped by Tonto and a masked man. A masked man, you say? Yes, a masked man on a big white stallion. <laughs> That's the tallest tale I ever heard. Never mind about the mash man. I know all about him. Uh, Jim, what in thunder were you doing back there in the hills? Sheriff, it was sort of a secret. Well, you can't hold no secrets now, Jim. Out with it. What were you doing back there? Well, I... I went back there to buy a little farm. Yeah? For Polly and me. A farm? But, well, Jim, you didn't uh, tell me. Polly was to be a surprise for you. I made the deal yesterday. I was taking the cash to pay for the place when that fellow jumped me and made me change horses. Did he take your money? No, he just took my horse. Seems to me he'd have taken your cash, well, too. Sure uh, who, uh, who owns the farm, Jim? A widow. She said she was going back to Missouri. Yeah. Tonto. Uh-huh. Me here, Sheriff. Where'd your friend go? Well, him go look for man who swapped paint horse. Then that settles it. <laughs> the masked man wasn't sure Jim was a bandit. Neither am I. And we'll soon find out if he's telling the truth. Yeah, how, Sheriff? I'm going to take Jim out to see that widow. If she backs up his story, I'll believe him. In the meantime, Jim, you're to consider yourself under arrest. Well, under arrest? I'm but I... uh, just playing safe, that's all. I'm taking you with me. But I'm taking a deputy to make sure you don't get away. Sam, you go with me. Uh, right, Sheriff. Uh, where's my other deputy? Here, Sheriff. Oh, well, here's my keys, Joe. I'll stay in my office and keep an eye on the prisoner while we're gone. Right. You, Tonto, you go with the posse. Lead him to where Jim said he swapped horses on the trail. They can swing out from there. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. You know, one of the best things about summer is those lazy afternoon picnics. And I bet your moms know about one of the easiest snacks ever, a marvelous Betty Crocker marble cake. Mmm, -hmm. what could taste better with a cold glass of milk or lemonade from the thermos than a big slice of marble cake? And Betty Crocker marble cake mix is the mix in just one package that you can mix in just one bowl. There's no chocolate to melt, no extra bowls or pans to wash. And the same high-quality ingredients you choose yourself are right in the mix, including famous softest silk cake flour and pure vegetable shortening. You just add water and two fresh eggs for a cake that is high, light, and, well, absolutely perfect. Betty Crocker guarantees with all her cake mixes a perfect cake every time you bake. Cake after cake after cake. Perfect or write General Mills, Minneapolis, Minnesota, for your money back. Ask your moms to bake up a marvelous Betty Crocker marble cake for the next picnic your family plans. Now to continue. Soon after the sheriff and his deputy had ridden out of town with Jim Boone, the door of the sheriff's office opened... Sheriff Taylor's daughter, Polly, was in the office with a deputy named Joe. They looked up at the stranger who moved slowly toward them, not knowing the man was Pete Sawtell. Can I do something for you, stranger? Yeah, you can hand over them keys. Wait, a gun! Hey, what's the idea? You heard me hand over your keys and make it fast, or I'll let you and that girl have it. All right, I'll turn around and start walking toward the cell. You too, lady, move. Hey, Pete, how thunder did you do it? Uh, just walked in and took over, Benny. Easiest thing I ever did in my life. There you are, Benny. Come on out. What about the girl and the deputy? They're going inside the cell. You first, ma'am. You won't get away with this. My father will get them both in. Go on, deputy, inside the cell. All right. There. I uh, 
I guess you can't start another posse on our trail for quite a spell. Come now. on, Pete. Let's get moving. Right. Your horse is tied up at the rack back of the jail. And Ma's waiting for us at the phone. A short time later, Polly Taylor and the deputy heard the door of the sheriff's office open. Let me out. We're locked in the cell. Help! Who locked you in there? Joe, it's Mayor. I'm masked, but I'm not a bandit. The crooks who robbed the bank locked us in here and took the keys. All right, stand back and I'll shoot off the lock. Two shots broke the lock. The door swung open and the prisoners were free. They told what had happened, how they had been locked up, and about the sheriff's trip to check on Jim Boone's story. Do you know where the farm is located? I think I do. Then we'll ride there at once and get your father. Uh, you, deputy, you better stay here in case the sheriff returns before we find him. Right, mister. Meanwhile, Sheriff Taylor, his deputy named Sam, and Jim Boone had reached the dilapidated farmhouse occupied by Maggie Sautel. The old woman had just finished hitching a team to her covered wagon. When she saw them ride up to the house and dismount, she hurried to meet them. Here she comes, Sheriff. Oh. Good day, ma'am. I was delayed in getting here as I promised. My sakes, I figured you weren't coming at all. Well, howdy, ma'am. Uh, why'd you bring the sheriff and this other gent with you, mister? I got into some trouble today. But I can clear myself if you'll verify the deal I was to make with you. About buying my farm? Yes. Will you tell the sheriff and his deputy what the deal was? Why, sure. I just go into the house where it's cooler... You know, it's not good for an old woman like me to stand out in the hot sun. Very well, ma'am. Come on, Jim. Hold on a minute, Sheriff. What's wrong, Jim? That bay horse hitched to the covered wagon is mine. Just stand where you are. Don't make a move. Well, where'd you get that rifle? From your own saddle, Sheriff, so you know it's loaded. What's the idea? I've got no time to palaver, mister. Just reach over and take the Sheriff's guns and drop them to the ground. Then get the deputy's guns. Well, hey, you... you two keep your hands up. Hey, two riders are coming this way. They see what you're up to and they have their guns drawn. <laughs> Those two riders are my boys. They've got their guns drawn just to make sure you gents don't get the drop on oh, me. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, looks like me and Pete got back just in time. Yep, you sure did, boys. You can help me tie up these three and hide them in the cabin. Then we'll get in the covered wagon and clear out. All right, you three. Get moving. Boys, I'll drive the team. You two climb inside the wagon and hide under the tarpaulin. Now, let's go. Get up! Get up there! From her high seat on the covered wagon, Maggie Sawtell could see horsemen riding through the hills looking for her two sons, who were concealed beneath the tarpaulin behind her. As the wagon rounded a curve in the trail, a girl and a man wearing a mask suddenly appeared and brought their horses to a halt. The masked man signaled to Maggie to stop the wagon. Oh, oh there, oh. What's wrong, Ma? Why are you stopping? Shut up, Benny. Be ready to shoot if I give the word. Don't rob me, mister. I'm just a poor widow woman. I... I'm not a bandit, ma'am. I stopped you because I need information. That bay horse. What about it, Polly? It's Jim's, the one the bank robber took from him. Other him, boys. Oh, what did you say? Mister, don't make a move for them guns of yours. Two rifles are poking out of this wagon right now, and the sights are leveled at you. Look, gun barrels. Get your hands up. Keep them high. Take his guns, Pete. Benny and his mother held guns in readiness, pointed at the Lone Ranger and Polly while Pete disarmed the masked man. Meanwhile, Tonto and the posse had been traveling through the hills and at a distance had sighted the Lone Ranger. They were approaching unnoticed by the outlaws at the time the masked man stopped the covered wagon. When Tonto saw his masked friend raise his hands and saw his guns being taken from their holsters, he urged his horse forward ahead of the lawman. Now, Pete, toss the guns into the back end of the wagon. All right, Ma. There they are. How about unmasking this critter? Tie his hands. 
And then I want to get a look at his face. Here, here, hold oh, there, over oh, there. Cover was a hundred yards away when he fired from the saddle. Accurate shooting was out of the question. His bullet went wild, but the shot caused Maggie and Benny to turn their eyes for just an instant. And it gave the Lone Ranger his chance to act. He charged at Benny. Look out! The force of the charge sent Benny staggering back against his mother. As the two stumbled and fell, Pete swung his rifle, but the masked man ducked low and shot a fist to Pete's stomach. Pete doubled over in pain. Meanwhile, Benny had regained his feet and grabbed a gun. Before he could bring it to bear, Tonto dived on him from the saddle. Maggie was reaching for the gun she had dropped. No, you don't. Give me that. You got a bit too late. Now get your hands up. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. We got this one. I give up. I give up. You too, Maggie. Get your hands up. When the men who had been riding with Toto drew rein, the Lone Ranger was in command of the situation. It was your shot that did it, Toto. Well, me see you stop wagon. See men climb out of wagon with rifles. Me shoot. That gave me the chance I wanted. Do your own guns, mister. Thanks, Polly. Now you men take over. Toto and I'll back trail this wagon. Uh, why did we do that? I think we may find the sheriff, his deputy, and Jim Boone in need of help. If they're not dead. Come on, Toto. I'm going with you. Very well, Polly. When the Lone Ranger and his friends reached Maggie Sawtell's cabin, they found Sheriff Taylor, his deputy, and Jim bound and gagged. They quickly released them, and Sheriff Taylor said, Well, if it hadn't been for you, mister, Sam, Jim, and I would have died in this cabin. No one would have looked for us here. That's right. Sheriff, you'll find the prisoners in the custody of your posse. They're two miles up the trail. Well, Tonto and I'll be going now. Easy, steady, big fellow. Easy, fellow. We'll find the bank's money in the wagon. The old woman put it there herself. Well, mister, I'll never forget what you've done for us. Adios, adios, Sheriff. Goodbye. Adios, Mr. Well, this beats all. How do you mean, Jim? That masked man and Indian arrested me and turned me over to you as a bandit. Then they saved my life. Dad, you seem to know the masked man. <laughs> I never saw him before ten minutes ago, Polly, but I know who he is. Who is he? Jim, that masked man is the Lone Ranger. I'll still uh, The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Boy. Listen to The Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.